Oh my gosh. So I checked out the paper. The executive assistant job was everything that I was doing as the project manager in the position that I was doing at the time. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is a piece of cake. I got this. Um, booking flights, uh, checking emails, coordinating meetings. And the most exciting part to me was being so close with the basketball organization, uh, sitting in meetings, uh, kind of learning the ups and downs, uh, being in the space of being a, bas a basketball exec. Without being a basketball exec, I was the assistant to it. So it gave me an opportunity to grow and learn in that space and also be responsible for this person's, you know, career in a professional way, which I had done being a project manager anyway. So when I saw it, I was like, this is, I'm more than qualified for this role. I feel like it was like a nightmare happened because me as a smart woman, I've done so much. I have, as a single mother, I worked so hard to protect myself, protect my daughter, uh, protect the people around me. Um, so when I'm asked like what happened, it's kind of, it seems like a vague answer, but I don't know. You know, something happened out of my control. Um, what I did was control what I could, and that was to not have this harassment stop me as a woman and not take away from the opportunity that I felt was still there within working in the organization. Because I did give my other positions away, my other careers away, I have to support my daughter and I have to keep this roof over our head. So if what you want me to do is to pick up your son and take care of your son and I'm going to do it because I'm in a position now to where I'm in this thing every day. I'm working. I'm going to the facility in the morning. I had to pick the kids up. It was just kind of like I was turned into a personal assistant nanny. And I was also called at one point, a couple of points, a couple of times, the driver by his son and his son's friends. And just as a woman who I've worked so hard in all the careers and everything that I've done, at the end of the day to be called a driver by teenagers, it was, it, to me, it was kind of heartbreaking. It's kind of funny, but it's not really funny. I took a huge pay cut um, getting rid of two jobs and taking on this job. Obviously it was only like $30,000 a year. I was told that in the beginning he said there, the pay is not that great, but the opportunity is going to be um, what is going to matter. And so I, again, single mother, doing my thing, no complaints. I'm proud to be, you know, from a divorce, getting to where I was, you know, no handouts, no help from anybody, just working and, you know, providing for my daughter and I, but there was one time, because like I said, the ride to pick his son up back down Jefferson and back to my house was 45 minute drive every day. So it was one time where I literally only had $5 to put in my gas tank. And his son laughed about it and was like, why are you only putting $5 on your gas? And I'm like, because I only have $5 on my card until, you know, cause now I'm living from paycheck to paycheck, which again, I felt was worth the not complaining thought it was worth the opportunity that I was told, promised. Um, so then one time I dropped him off and they called me back and he goes, hey, my dad wants to talk to you. This is one of the times where I had stopped coming inside the house. I had stopped, I can drop you off, but I'm not going back inside because I would go inside. I would make sure, you know, he didn't feel alone. Like he was just a taxi service, like dropping him off you know, make sure he's okay, eat, do your homework, stuff like that. I would get texts from Rob, like, hey, make sure he does his homework and things like that. So I had drove off. It was like, hey, my dad wants to talk to you. So I'm just like, oh, man, like, here we go. Let me go inside. But it was a time where Rob had did, and this probably happened twice, where he gave me 100 bucks for gas to take care of me driving his son and back and forth. Other than that, I didn't gain any, um, when I would take, I would, I, it would be my money. Um, it would be my dollar. And that was okay with me. I'm giving this kid an experience that his mom is not here. His dad is not here. That never mattered to me. So I never, uh, received any gas money was it. And then to be paid for the Rob Murphy foundation event that I did. And that was it. The verbal harassment started first. Okay. okay. 
and it kind of lit up. And again, at the time I didn't see, he was testing me, testing the waters. Mm -hmm. Don't tell people about my personal life. Um, I gotta know, I have to know I can trust you. I have to know that it was kind of like he was grooming, it's disgusting to think about it, that he was grooming me without me knowing, um, you know, that outfit, you know, I don't want other men in the office looking at you like that. And for me, jokingly, I'm just like, okay, well, buy me another wardrobe, you know, just not even knowing that I was being groomed in a space that was later to be a nightmare. At what point, did he, did he ever say, when you started to get uncomfortable about your job, mm -hmm. the treatment, the harassment, the assault, did he ever say to you, uh, something to the effect of don't bother complaining to HR because I have clout here and there's not you know, oh. I, you know can, can you talk a little bit about that yeah I would love to um, one of the things that again when you're in the space you don't really realize is happening to you mm -hmm. is I was isolated and manipulated in a space to where Rob made it feel like he was the only person there who had my back and that could protect me he made statements um, not only to myself, but to another colleague about me, that HR didn't want me there. Nobody wanted me there. Um, my job was given to, was going to be given to a person who had a higher education than I did. Um, that <laughs> HR thought I was ghetto. He also thought I was ghetto. Uh, things that I did was ghetto and that without him, I wouldn't have the position. And so he definitely made me <clears throat> feel, and it's not the fact that I just went into that blindly. There was an amount of trust that I had in Rob, obviously. And so when he said things like that, I didn't second guess that. And it made me feel as if HR protected him. He had a fierce protection behind him with HR. They brought up the fact that the only time I did get pulled into HR is the time where Nicolette said what I, something I was wearing was inappropriate. I felt like it wasn't. I've shared the picture of what I was wearing. I actually um, wore that same outfit to sit in front of their attorneys so they could see. Um, and it was very mean girl-esque. It was very discriminating and it was a very uncomfortable comfortable space. Uh, there were breaking points to where I would lay in my bed and I would cry and I, would, I couldn't even get out of bed. There were breaking points to where I went for other employment. I researched other employment and applied for other employment within the organization. But one of the things that really, like I said, the breaking point that kept me from ever staying the night again was when Rob attempted to force me to have sex with him. And that's something hard to talk about. Um, again, it was one of those times where, because it happened twice to where he came home after being away on a scouting trip and came home early. And it happened the morning after he came. And it was just, again, I'm in a space where I'm not expecting to be harassed. I'm not expecting to be assaulted. Um, and he tried to force me to engage in sex with him at, at his house. And it was forceful and it was to the point where I had to gain my strength mentally emotionally and physically to get myself out of that situation. That was a huge breaking point. Well, that happened at a time where I had stayed the night. Um, he was out, out on a scouting trip and he ended up coming home at like two o'clock in the morning. Um, so I was still there with his son. Uh, the next morning he called both him and his son, both his son and I in his room uh, to talk. We were just talking about, okay, how was school? What happened? And then in the midst of the conversation, he excuses out of the room. He's like, hey, I need to talk to DJ for a sec. So we're in the room, and at this point, he's standing in front of me. My guards are down because we were all in the same, you know, I'm not thinking. And again, I can't keep, t I can't keep beating myself up for that. Like, okay, I wasn't thinking. But he then got in front of me and pushed me down on his bed and tried to like engage in, you know, the beginning of, you know, some kind of sexual activity. So I'm literally trying to push my body up because he's on top of me and I'm like, hey Rob, like I don't want to do this. And he then, this it is disgusting to say, but I thought of anything and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm on my period. And he's just like, DJ, it's just a little blood, you know, we're adults, you need to get out of your head. 
when he said that, even right now, it just kind of makes me want to regurgitate. Um, saying that, it gave me enough to like push up and just sit at the ed edge of the bed. As I'm sitting at the edge of the bed, he then gets up and he's pacing his room now. And he's just like, you just think too much. You know, you just need to let stuff happen. Um, this isn't a big deal. Sex is sex. You know, all these things. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, what just happened to me? As he's still speaking, I'm still in a mode in a space of what just happened and how do I get out of this space right now? And I had let a couple of women know, uh, one, because I didn't want the same thing to happen to them in the organization, especially uh, one that was younger. And it really broke my heart to even think for a second that this could be happening to her because we all worked closely with Rob. Um, and yeah, I, there were people I, I told in real time as the harassment was going on, what happened, um, that person knew when it happened, while, while it happened. And it was a time where her and I sat down and we were both in tears talking about it. And it was just like, she was like, DJ, you have to, you have to say something. This, he has to be stopped. And in that sit down, I realized that I was going to be the person to stop him. And I think I said that out loud. 